Day two of the New Zealand Cycle Classic sees stage two, 121 kilometres, three laps of the Gladstone circuit. The wind today, a little bit stiffer than yesterday, so that'll be challenging. Two King of the Mountains climbs, but nothing too steep that'll really challenge the riders. I think it'll be the fast, aggressive nature of the stage, and we have Nick Redditch in the tour leader's yellow jersey with a big job to do on day two to defend it. <laughs> <laughs> Oliver's Real Food, they've got the yellow jersey with Nick Redditch. You're four seconds behind. Two climbs, but nothing really too challenging. Key moments of this stage? Uh, I'm not worried about the climbs. It's more the crosswind down the back. Um, and just, just uh, dangerous breakaways, really. Um, like it's it's teams, of, um, teams of six, but only five can ride, so it's not big teams. So, yeah, just being attentive and... and uh, just having fun out there, really. You went through an, a major, major injury, massive crash. Your life was in the balance, but you're back at the very top level after they told you you wouldn't even walk again. You must be just so stoked to be back racing. Yeah, I mean, I've certainly got a better appreciation for the smaller things in life, and I'm, I'm really grateful for the, the opportunities that I have. So um, it's really good to be back here, um, back in the level, this level of racing, and um, I just the case of just believing in myself and not listening to anyone that told me that I couldn't do it and just didn't let them discourage my my wanting to 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 achieve my dreams and ambitions in life so going forward for the the rest of this race but also the rest of the season your plans well so yesterday I ticked off the first goal which was finished with the bunch which I haven't been able to do for over a year now since the accident so that was a great great um goal for me um, I guess for the rest of the tour for t today, I just want to stay safe and or just be opportunistic and then probably try and give a good crack up Admiral Hill and see how I feel. Good luck. Well done. Just good thanks. to have you back. <laughs> it's good to be back. It certainly is good to have Keegan Gildeston back in the peloton. Day two, stage two, the Gladstone circuit. Three laps of a 30 kilometre circuit, 121 kilometres in total. It's going to be another great day's racing conditions. Overcast, a little bit more wind than we had yesterday, but no real challenges on the course in terms of big climbs, two little climbs, one sprint to test the riders. It'll come down to how hard they want to push the pedals. The Fagan Motors lead car leading them through the neutralised section out of Masterton onto the Gladstone circuit. As always... Racing starts as soon as the flags drop. The riders very keen to get into it early. Some will be feeling the effects of yesterday's stage. Others will be all the better for having one day of racing in their legs. The yellow jersey, Oliver's Real Food, Nick Redditch, he's got that safely tucked on him on his shoulders. And he'll be looking for a good, comfortable ride today being protected by his team. Hayden McCormick, just a few seconds behind from the New Zealand national team. We heard from Hayden earlier. Just uh, being alert today, not missing anything, any vital moves. And in the first few kilometres, it's Mobius's Dylan Newbury. Put down the first solo attack, looks under his arm. Will they let him go, or is it too early in the stage? And they want to get a better selection. He's been joined. Carsten Chapman of Oliver's Real Food Racing, just going up there to police the move maybe for his Team and tour leader. Also joining him in the break, number 31, World Individual Pursuit Champion, Jordan Kirby, a real powerhouse to have in the break. Now with him there, this break has every chance of extending its lead and getting out to a fairly good distance. There's the chase, Michael Torkler, New Zealand national team on the front, rides for the Blinds Direct team in the New Zealand domestic scene. It's in great form and uh, pushing for a place in the Commonwealth Games road squad. The riders come past the war memorial that remembers the fallen soldiers of the area. The three riders working well together. The gap out to one and a half minutes early in the stage. So the peloton at the moment quite happy with only three riders away. As I mentioned, Jordan Kirby... Saw him for the very first time here last year, then he went on to win the World Individual Pursuit Championships. Recently at the Oceana Championships at the Avanti Dream, he was in great form in all the endurance races. And he's come to this race with good form as well. Brett Grieve, 
from the Tank Guy Bike Box, current leader of the King of the Mountains competition. Today, two Mega Mitre 10 Masterton climbs for King of the Mountains points, so Grieve will probably try and keep near the front of the peloton and hopefully pick up some more points. But with three riders away, it doesn't help his chances. When the peloton is Grupo Compacto like that, the pace is usually uh, off a little bit. The riders out front working hard, all taking their turns. Big turns being done. The comments are coming out are going turn for turn with Jordan Kirby. is no easy feat, and he's the man driving it. Riding for the Brisbane Cycling Academy. They were here last year as the Cobra 8 team. They've moved to the continental, pro-continental level to give young riders uh, more opportunity to get into bigger races. The yellow jersey just staying near the front of the peloton. No need to panic. He's got a teammate up the road. So everyone's quite happy with the situation. Very early in the stage, of course. A lot of them are still thinking about Saturday's Admiral Hill stage. The circuit often comes down to a big bunch sprint, but the wind, you can see those trees blowing. When they're blowing like that, the crosswind can make it tough. Carson Chapman, his dad, is the manager of the team. Chris, he rode the Commonwealth Games road race in Auckland in 1990. So he's here managing the team. Oliver's Real Food Racing, uh, Sam Lazell's back in Australia. In good hands with uh, Chris in charge. And he'll no doubt be pretty happy to see his son in this break as they come over the climb for the first of three. Of course, two of them are King of the Mountains climbs. Dylan Newbury. Unchallenged as he led over the climb. Last year's champion, Joe Cooper, leading the peloton. So a lot of people ask, how do the riders are able to use both sides of the road? Well, throughout this uh, event, the race is controlled by the police, effectively in a rolling roadblock. A lot of cooperation from the, the police uh, for this cycling event in the wire wrapper. A lot of support from the locals, uh, we're all very considerate getting off to the side of the road. Let the race come through. The convoy of cars you see behind, they're all the team cars. So 18 teams, 18 team cars, plus the, the race referees, the doctor, all on that convoy. And the riders go back to those team cars to pick up their water bottles, get extra food. Been along on the front, Joe Cooper. He's got all the carriages attached, the big engine. Just picking up the tempo, doesn't want the break. It's been out to a five minutes. It's time to start bringing it back. Been along Swiss Wellness, a well-drilled, well-organized unit. Dylan Newbury on the front for the break. Nice fast pedaling action of Jordan Kirby. The strain of the effort required in the tailwind section, they're hitting speeds of 60 kilometers an hour. They know the peloton's given them some rope, but how much today will they give them? Will they be able to stay away to the end? 121 kilometres. Harry Wayne up there assisting for Team Skater Racing, of course, riding for Robert Stannard. Oliver's Real Food protecting the yellow jersey. Nick Redditch. Joe Cooper driving it. Now that the Pelton's strung out, the pace is certainly picking up. Sprint ace this group, they won't really compete for the sprint, they'll just roll over. Chapman takes the points. Gordon Kirby picks up a water bottle from the team car, just uh, has a quick chat. They're still the peloton under the guidance of been along Swiss Wellness, the Australian cycling team that's been to this race many, many years. Usually you have Andrew Christie Johnson here managing the team this year. It's Jason Rigg. 
They've had riders uh, win this race, win many stages on this race. Last year with Joe Cooper. But Cooper's doing a lot of work for the team, so maybe they don't see him as the, the main rider for them this year. And now and Joe, he'll just be riding himself in, and you can never rule him out. JLT Condor. Another past winner, Taylor Gunman, with the white glasses and the black. Vantage windows and doors, APL New Zealand kit. And the big truck pulls over, gets off the road, a heavy load vehicle, found a nice safe place to park. And there's a nice piece of art from the Scarecrow competition. Such a popular event in the wire wrapper. The red jersey just going through the shot. That's Hayden McCormick, the man that sits second overall. Still it's Cooper and his team doing all the work on the front, not getting a lot of help at all. The yellow jersey sits there. He's quite content. Things are pretty good for him right now. Team made up the road, so he has no need to chase. Aidan McCormick just uh, grabbing a water bottle, having a drink, something to eat. Luke Mudgeway, keep an eye on Luke Mudgeway if it comes to a sprint finish today. He's on the bright yellow bike, easy to pick out for the New Zealand team. Former junior world track champion. The three out front, eating, drinking and working hard to stay away. Jordan Kirby just looks comfortable out front, doesn't he? Doesn't look like he's hurting himself too much, but believe me, the speed and the pressure he's been putting on, the arrowhead at the front of the peloton. Everyone happy to have been along Swiss Wellness, do all the work. Gladstone welcomes the New Zealand Cycle Classic, and of course, JLT Condor, all the way from Great Britain, real favourites in the area, John Herity, Great supporter of the race, the former British professional road race champions, the team manager, and of course Condor over in the UK, celebrating 70 years. 70 years of making uh, handmade Condor bikes, the bikes that the riders are using here, carbon fibre. Of course they weren't that 70 years ago when Condor first started. Jordan Kirby, on his own. He's left the other three riders, the other two riders, he's on his own, trying to get over this climb before the peloton make contact. He wants to get down the hill onto the other side to give himself a chance. One minute's his lead. About 23, 25 kilometres to go as he makes his way down off the climb, nice and low. Here's the peloton coming up to him. They've got him at last. It's taken them a fair while. Almost 100 kilometres out front for Jordan Kirby. Most aggressive rider on the stage today, for sure. It's been announced by the race commissaires that Jordan Kirby will take the red jersey for the most aggressive rider on the stage. James Oram puts in a little move on the front. So now that it's back together, dangerous time for the teams trying to control it for the sprinters as little attacks go off the front. Some of the strong riders we saw yesterday, the Swiss national team sending a rider away in the last few kilometres and being picked up. No doubt they'll have a plan again today. There's McCormick in the red just closing the gap to that front group. Mobius, the Australian Cycling Academy, keeping an on the, their riders to get organised for the sprint as well. Cameron Scott, their fast man. There's Taylor Gunman on the left-hand side of the road. He'll be thinking about Luke Mudgeway. Alex Ray's up there for Frieza Racing, the little man in the black. Very fast finisher, more than capable of winning the stage today. Joel Walsh from the GPM team, another fast finisher. A little move. So team's trying to get it away. It's, oh, that's because two riders have sneaked off the front. This is a dangerous time in the bike race coming into the closing kilometres. Everybody will be trying their hand, but you've got to be able to go at 60 kilometres an hour and keep it going for a long time. That's Campbell Pithy trying to bring Noel Turner a birthday present with a stage win. But he'll need those three riders to give it everything. Everyone's keen. They're 
Another rider comes across. They're back together as soon as they're caught. Someone else has a go. Getting along Swiss Wellness. Two riders now on the front. Michael Torkel is there covering things for the New Zealand team. Anthony Guy Coppo, that'll be the man that been along Swiss Wellness will want to set up. As they come back, another attack. This time, same tactic as yesterday from the Swiss national team. Terry Scheer off the front. Now he is a pursuiter. There's some hand signals. JLT Condor, come on, get up here. We can't let this man go. Off the front, 15 seconds is his gap. Can he hold it as 15 seconds enough in the last few kilometres? It's a decent sized gap. Which team is going to commit? Terry Scher putting the hammer down. He's got the big gear going. He's on top of the gear. He's across the bridge. He knows the finish is only about three kilometres away. But Peloton, they haven't reacted at full gas yet. The team's going to have to go to the front, really commit, try and bring the Swiss rider back because he's a strong man driving it. He's waited patiently in the Peloton all day and this is his do or die effort. Now they're starting to come after him. Ben along again leading the chase. The bright yellow jerseys hard onto the left-hand side of the road, trying to get organised on the other side. The Australian Cycling Academy, Mobius, they might be thinking about the chances of Brad Evans, but right now, the Australian Cycling Academy getting organised. 400 metres to go. The red jersey, that's Hayden McCormick leading out. He'll be thinking of Luke Mudgeway in the middle. The Australian Cycling Academy, they'll be looking for Cameron Scott. JTL, there we go, JTL maybe will have the finish today, oh, a bit of a tip, the foot might have got a bit of a clip, there's Luke Mudgeway on the inside, Luke Mudgeway, is he going to get up, he's trying hard but it's Cameron Scott, he's going to take the win, Cameron Scott gets there, Luke Mudgeway, Joel Wash, Lem Kappel, Matthew Gibson and they're celebrating the Australian Cycling Academy, Ride Sunshine Coast. Yeah, we had a pretty easy ride today. There was a, a move up the road and one of the other teams were chasing pretty hard all day so we could just sit back and wait for a sprint towards the end. Dylan, uh, two days now the tour, two stages done, you're still in the yellow jersey. The day went absolutely fantastic for you today. Yeah, again, a perfect day. Um, the boys rode amazing all day and kept me sheltered and kept me protected. Um, so yeah, good to take that one off. Was well, so you nervous when the break had got out to five minutes? You had a teammate in the break but five minutes is a big gap. Yeah, it is. I mean, um, we, were, we were really happy, though, to have one go, and it just uh, took the pressure off us all day and, and meant the other teams had to chase, so uh, a great scenario. No doubt about the stage winner, Cameron Scott from Luke Mudgeway, Joel Walsh, Len Kappel, and Matthew Gibson. Nick Redditch at the top of the leaders' board with a four-second lead over McCormick, then Stannard Vink. The tour leader... Nick Redditch then being presented with the yellow jersey by Mita 10, a mega owner and former world motorbike champion Aaron Slight. Well, a deserving winner, Cameron Scott of Stage 2 of the New Zealand Cycle Classic. Tomorrow it's Masterton to Martinborough, another premier stage and one all the riders would like to win.